Hey, have you always wanted to animate characters but felt intimidated by the complex process involved in After Effects? Don't worry, this course is for you then. So the most fundamental element of character animation is character rigging and that is exactly what we will cover in this course. So we will use a free plugin called Tweak Angela to rig our characters. And you can get all the files, assets and illustrations that we will be using throughout this course from our website that is linked in the description and also in the pinned comment section. And inside the open file, you will also get 6 custom character animations and a full body character rig with some customization options. But before moving forward, do hit the like button and comment down below because this kind of videos requires a lot of time and effort and your likes and comments really motivates me to make more free courses and tutorials like this and that is also one way you can support this channel. So now let's check out the course overview. In lesson 1, we will learn how to rig a character's face using Tweak Angela. In lesson 2, we will learn how to add controllers to your character rig so that you can easily change the character's appearance like changing the hairstyle, adding or removing the beard or some accessories or changing the skin tone of the character with just few controllers. In lesson 3, we will learn how to add lip sync so that you can animate the character's mouth for a voiceover. In lesson 4, we will learn how to rig the full body of the character using Tweak Angela. In lesson 5, we will learn how to rig hand gestures so that you can easily animate the hands in your character animation with just a single controller. And finally, in lesson 6 and the final lesson, we will learn how to rig your character's foot in fake 3D so that you can easily change the character's direction like this. So without any further delay, let's dive right into lesson 1, the face rigging. Ok so we are in Adobe Illustrator and here in the layer panel you can see I have separated each and every elements of the character illustration in a separate layer. For example, the neck is in a separate layer, the shadow of the head is in a separate layer, even the face is in a separate layer, each of the ears are also in a separate layer. So I have separated each of the layers of the each of the elements in such a way that when I'm importing this illustration file in After Effects, I want each and every individual elements in a separate layer inside the character composition. Also, you can notice that I have separated, uh, I have kept few artwork for the hairstyles. So these are different hairstyles I have kept here in the illustration itself so that when I'm adding the controller to change the hairstyle in After Effects, I want these artworks to link with those controllers. Same I have done with the beard and also with the headphone. Alright, so now let's jump into Adobe After Effects and let's get started with the rigging process. Okay, so we're in After Effects and I have converted all the illustration layers into shape layers. So if you don't know how to do that, you just have to right click on it and then go to create and then create shape from vector layer. So let's undo it and let's lock it again. Now, let's start with adding a null object. So right click and go to new and a null object. And let's move the anchor point exactly at the center and let's align it exactly at the center of the composition window. And let's rename the null as facial elements. And I'm going to move it down on top of the facial elements. So I'm going to select all the facial elements like eyes, eyebrows, then mouth, nose, and even the spectacles and parent it with the null object, excluding the hair layers, okay? So first I'm going to open the position property and separate the dimension of the position. So right click, separate dimension, add keyframes on X and Y position property. So if you want to rig the face of the character, you need extreme poses from each dimension. From X position, you need two extreme poses and a neutral pose. And from Y position, you need two extreme poses and neutral pose. So this is the this is going to be one extreme pose and in between you can keep as many frames as uh, you want i want to keep like five frames in between each key poses so let's jump on to next five frames and let's add keyframes and let's again jump on to next five frames and let's add keyframes so the middle keyframes are going to be the neutral pose these are going to be the extreme pose so for x position it is going to be extreme left 
So I'm going to move it exactly at the left. So this is going to be the extreme left. And then at the end, the X position is going to be the extreme right. For the Y position, here it's going to be extreme down. This is going to be neutral. And for the Y position at the start, it is going to be extreme up. To avoid any confusion, let's turn off the visibility of these here layers. So let's select the face layer and let's open the shape path property and also add a keyframe on the position property as well. And I would like to parent the facial elements with the face. Now let's add keyframe on the X and Y position property of the face layer and also uh, on the shape path property. Press U to open the properties with keyframes and let's add keyframes uh, on the neutral pose and one at the end as well. So for the position, I'm just going to shift it slightly this side, I mean on the left. And for the X axis at the end, I'm going to shift it slightly on the right. For the Y axis, it is going to be slightly shifted down. And at the start, it is going to slightly shift a little bit up. Now I'm going to modify the shape path. So for the shape path, uh, I'm just going to move the jawline. So the jawline is only going to uh, effect if the character is moving the face in the X axis. So like that, I'm going to move the jawline. For example, uh, at the extreme left, the jawline is going to shift a little bit this side and just fix the shape path over here. Okay, so this is how the jawline is going to look like at the extreme left. And now it's time to modify the shape path for extreme right. And I'm just going to follow the same process. And now we're going to add keyframes on the ear layers. So let's select the right ear and the left ear. Open the position property, separate the dimension. Again, we are just going to follow the exact same process. Since the ears are a little bit backside of the face layer, so it's actually going to move in the opposite direction due to the perspective. Okay, now let's add keyframes on the hair layer on the backside of the face. So let's turn on the visibility of the layer. Let's open the keyframes, I mean the position property and let's separate the dimension and add keyframes. And let's add keyframes at the start and also at the end. So this is the neutral pose. At the start, we're going to move it in the opposite direction, same as the year. And at the end, again, we are going to uh, move it at the extreme left since the face is turned on the extreme right. And for the Y axis, it is going to be extreme up. And at the start, it is going to be extreme down. Okay, now let's turn on the visibility of the hair layer uh, in front of the face. So let's open the position property and again separate the dimensions and add keyframes. So at the start, we're going to move it on the extreme left, same as the face. At the end, on the X axis, we are just going to move it extreme right. And for the Y axis, we are going to move it extreme down. And at the start, it is going to move extreme up. And for the hair layer in front of the face, we can also add keyframes on the shape path property. So this is going to be the neutral pose. At the start, I'm just going to select this shape and move it in a little bit and maybe uh, slightly modify the shape path. Same on the extreme right as well. Okay, now let's turn on the visibility of the beard layer. So for the beard, I have added a separate layer for the lips with the same color as the skin tone. Now, if I move the playhead, uh, let's see. Yeah, the beard is looking pretty, uh, I mean, it's looking perfect with the head rotation since I have already parented the beard with the null. So we don't have to animate it separately. Okay, now it's time to add keyframes on the headphone layer. So let's turn on the visibility of the headphone and open the position property and separate the dimension at keyframes. So for the extreme left, the headphones are again going to shift in the opposite direction, similar to years. And now let's add keyframes on the shape path property of individual shapes of the headphone so that we have we can modify it when uh, the 
character is rotating the head in the x axis so this is the neutral pose and this is the extreme lift and following the same process we are going to modify the shape path of the headphone when the character is looking to extreme right and now let's replace this head shadow layer with a shape layer so let's solo this layer for now and let's pick the pen tool and draw a shape path and let's bring it on top of the actual layer so i'm going to use the neck layer as an alpha mat and let's delete this illustration layer and just turn on the visibility of the neck layer so let's parent this with the face layer and now let's open the position property and separate the dimension and again add keyframes on extreme left right up and down and also let's add keyframes on the shape path property and modify it according to the jawline movement okay one last thing that we are left to do over here is just change the direction of the nose when the character is rotating the head in the x-axis so select the nose layer and open the shape path property and add a keyframe on the path property and we are just going to change the direction at the extreme right so now it's the fun part we are going to link all the layers with the keyframes with a single controller so that we can control the entire face of the character with just a single layer. So go to Dwig Angular, then click on links and constraints, then the connectors. So click on the settings button and here you will get few options for the connectors. The first one is a 1D slider, there is a 2D slider. For this one we need a 2D slider, so click on it. So here is our 2D slider, let's scale it up. So we're going to link the X properties and the Y properties separately. And we're also going to link the properties or the shape path properties with the X property because we have animated the shape path only for the X axis movements. So let's select the X properties and also the shape path properties. And then we're going to select this as X. So X is by default selected, then click on next and click on properties. So now if we move the controller in the X axis, you can see the entire character's face with all the elements are moving or animating accordingly. I mean, I don't have to touch any other layer. I'm just moving this single layer of the single controller and it's controlling this character like a joystick in a video game. Now we're going to do the same for the Y axis. So first we have to just click on the cross button again, then click on those settings, make sure the slider is selected and then pick controller. Now from here we have to change it to Y. And now we have to select all the keyframes on the Y position property and then click on next again then click on properties and now if i move the controller either in y or x axis you can see the whole head is animating like this so to animate the head or change the direction you just have to open the position property and simply animate it that's it you don't have to touch any other layer you can see how easy it is right now to animate this entire face with all the components with just a single layer okay now we're going to add a controller for the eye blink so let's select the eye and the eyebrow layers and let's change the color of the layer to a different color so that we can properly distinguish it from the rest of the layers and let's select the eye layers and open the scale property and we're going to add a keyframe at the start and at the end so for the eye blink we only need two key poses it's because we are not going to use uh, this 2d slider we are going to use a 1d slider so at the start we are going to keep the eye closed so unlink the x and the y position of the skill and we're going to give the y zero not exactly zero i would give it like eight percent and 
same for the other eye as well let's give it eight percent and let's select the eyebrow layers with the position and add keyframes and at the start when the eye is closed i'm just going to move the eyebrow a little bit down that's it now we're going to bring in another controller from tweak angular so go to links and constraints and then click on the settings and then this time we are going to click on this slider so this is a 1d slider okay let's move it and let's scale it up and place it over here now we are going to select all these four set of keyframes and then click on next then click on properties and now when we move this controller we can animate the eyes and if we move the controller in one complete cycle we get an eye blink okay now let's move on to lesson two where we will learn how to add controllers to your character wig to add some customization options so let's add a new null object so go to layer new and null object and let's name it master controls and now let's select this layer and go to fx and presets panel and type in drop down and we're going to apply drop down menu control so the drop down menu control is here in the fx control panel now click on the edit from here you can edit the options item one item two or item three and you can even add more items from the add button or you can subtract it by selecting it and clicking on the minus button so for this particular illustration i have kept only two different hairstyles so we only need two different options so let's name it style one and style two and let's name this effect as hairstyles so let's select a hair layer and open the opacity property by pressing t and Let's add an expression by pressing and holding the Alt key and clicking on the stopwatch. So we're going to add an if else statement. So if then brackets and inside the bracket, we are going to put in the condition for the if. So let's pick with this with, okay, let's select this controller and lock this property. And we are going to just pick with and uh, just move the cursor inside it and just pick with this with this menu equal to equal to one that means the index one so in this uh, drop down menu these uh, options are indexing so style one is index one style two is index two now if this is the condition then inside the open and close parenthesis print 100 that means the opacity should be 100% else then again open and close parenthesis and inside the parenthesis print zero so this is going to be the condition now style one is selected now if i change it to style two you can see it's gone so like this we are just going to copy this expression so select it and just copy it so this is the style one and this is the style two just uh, turn on the visibility and then open the opacity property and now let's paste the expression over here but this time the condition should be two because this is style two right so now if i change it to style two you can see the style has also changed so like this we have to also copy this expression and paste it on for the back side of the hair as well now the entire hair is fully controlled from this drop down menu okay now we're going to add an on off toggle button for the beard glasses and for the headphone and for that we're going to use the checkbox control okay let's select the master controls null object and then go to the fx control panel and type in checkbox and we're going to apply this effect and let's name it beard on off okay now let's select the beard layer and the lip layer on top of the beard so let's press t to open the opacity property and we're going to add some expression so press and hold the alt key and click on the stopwatch and link with this checkbox and then dot value multiplied by 100 and now if we check it it's going to bring the beard and if we uncheck it it's going to turn off the beard similarly we can copy this 
expression and paste it over here as well so that the when the beard is on the pink color lip is also on otherwise there is another lip layer with black color and following the exact same process you can add checkbox for the headphones or even for the glasses okay now let's see how to add a controller to change the skin tone and the hair color so let's select the master controls null object again and apply a fill effect let's name this skin tone one and let's pick this skin tone and let's duplicate this effect one more time and let's pick the color of the shadows so now we are just going to link the color properties with these two effects so select the face layer first let's open the contents and the fill color and we're just going to pick whip this color with skin tone one then go to the neck layer we can simply apply another fill effect and just link this fill effect with skin tone one similarly we can again go to the head shadows and go to the fill color and link this color with skin tone 2 and now if we change the skin tone to a different color you can see i can easily change the color directly from the effects control panel i don't have to select this layer and then change the color so in the similar process you can add more controllers like if you want to change the color of the headphone or for the hair or for the t-shirt you can do that in the similar process okay now let's see how to export all your character rate controllers to essential graphics panel and export it as a mogurt file so that you can even use your character rig in premiere pro okay we are back in after effects and let's open the character rates composition in the essential graphics panel for that select the main composition inside which we have the entire character rig in the project panel right click on it and open in essential graphics panel so this is the essential graphics panel and we're going to export all the controllers here in this panel now we don't need this illustration layers right now because uh, and uh, there are too many layers here in the timeline so let's select all the extra layers that we don't need to use anymore and click on shy and activate shy after that we're going to export the properties from the timeline to the essential graphics panel let's start with the master control inside it we have the hair styles so let's export menu and now if i change the style it's interlinked so we only need to use the essential graphics panel now let's get to the next property so here let's import this beard on off checkbox button like this we're going to import all the other other properties like color and in the similar manner we can even import the properties to control this slider controls in the essential graphics panel so to control this slider we only need to use the position property so let's open the position property and delete the expression here in the position property and after deleting it you must see it's a bit shifted that's because the y position has been shifted from zero we can just give it zero and then we can add a slider controller here on this controller go to fx control panel and add a slider controller let's name it x position and then let's split the dimension of the position now open the fx properties inside we have the x position let's open it and we're going to pick up the x position with the slider now we can import the slider directly in the essential graphics panel now we have the option to edit the range so let's click on edit range and let's give it minus 50 to 50. now we can get the eye blink directly from the from this uh, controller here in the essential graphics panel but if we would have directly imported the position property here in the essential graphics panel I mean we will not get this edit range option so that's the reason why i have added the slider controls and in the similar process you can add slider controller to the 2d slider controls for one for the x position one for the y position and import it separately in the essential graphics panel 
and you can further rename it in the essential graphics panel like you can double click on it and you can name it i blink and for this face x and let's rename this one as well okay now let's see how to export these controls with the character rig as a mogurt file so for that click on export motion graphics template and from here browse the location where you want to export let's rename it mogurt and let's name this file over here and here you can add a keyword attached with this mogurt file so that you can easily search it later on so let's give it character rig 001 or something like that and press ok and now let's move on to lesson 3 where we will learn how to lip sync your characters like this so these are the mouth key poses that will cover almost each and every pronunciation and sounds in a voiceover and now we are in after effects and here we have the face rig that we have rigged in the last lesson and i have shied out all the unnecessary layers over here in the timeline so let's import the mouth illustration file let's double click on the project panel browse the file and select it as composition written layer size and import now let's bring it in the timeline and place it on top of the lip layer and let's get inside the composition and let's turn off the visibility of other mouth poses and only keep the neutral one and let's scale it down and reposition it properly so that it matches the position of the original mouth in the facial rig and now I'm going to just parent this with the lip and let's turn off the visibility of this one okay now let's add a null object and let's name it lip sync and let's apply a slider controller on this null object let's lock the effects control panel on this uh, on this layer and let's get inside the mouth poses composition okay let's change the background color of this uh, of this composition to something different other than black and now select any layer i'm just going to start with the neutral pose and open the opacity property for that press t in the keyboard okay now let's press and hold the alt key and click on the stopwatch uh, to open the expression panel and here we are going to add some expression so starting with adding a variable let's give the name of the variable layer num equal to one enter control control is another variable equal to then we will pick whip this with this slider controller let's add a semicolon and then enter then we will add an if else statement if then opening and closing brackets inside the bracket we are going to put in a condition which is control equal to equal to layer num then open and closing parenthesis inside we are going to print value equal to 100 that means if this is the condition that is fulfilled the opacity is going to be 100 so we are typing this expression in the opacity property so the value will be 100 and uh, else the condition would be then open and cro closing parenthesis it's going to be zero or value equ equal to zero and then add the semicolon so this is going to be the condition okay so after typing the expression you can see there is nothing in the screen that's because on the slider the value is zero and here we have put in the condition that if layer num equal to one then you have to print uh 100 percent or else it's going to be zero so if i give one it's visible if i give two it's again not going to be visible so we have to copy this expression and paste it in all these layers and uh, just assign a number for this one it's one for this one it can be two then three four and accordingly we are going to assign a number in each of these layers in the opacity property so let's open the opacity property of this layer paste it and for this one the condition would be if layer num equal to two again let's copy then again paste it and we are going to just change the layer num value that's it for this it's going to be three then 
again for this one it's going to be 4 and so on Okay, now we have added expression to all the mouth poses opacity property. Now, here in the slider controller, if we change the number 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, after 12, nothing is going to be visible because 12 is the maximum number of poses we, ha we have here in the composition. And before that, you can see, if I change the number, the mouth pose is changing accordingly. But the problem is going to be if I give minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 or something more than uh, 12, anything is going to be visible. Or if I give uh, a decimal value like uh, 4.5, anything, nothing is going to be visible because we have only assigned an integer value. So for that, we have to round up this number so that whatever we type in, here in the slider control, we only get uh, uh, the number in between 1 to 12 plus the number is going to be a round number. So for that, we have to again add an expression here in the slider control. So press and hold the Alt key and click on the stopwatch. And here we have to type in an expression, which is math.floor. Then opening and closing brackets, clamp, inside the brackets, let's pick with this slider, then dot value, comma, the initial number, The then we have to type in the range. So the range here is 1, comma, 12. And then just add a semicolon. And I think it's going to work properly if I uh, enter anything like 15.6 we only get 12 or if I give a negative number like minus 5 we get 1 and whatever we uh, type in here or whatever uh, I mean no matter how much we slide in this number we only get numbers between 1 to 12 and uh, the output is going to be an integer okay now let's import the voiceover and let's animate the mouth so here we have a single line audio recording and we are going to lip sync this inspire with creativity ignite with passion Insp so let's start with inspire or i so for this uh, we can use e uh, then select the lip sync layer and go to the fx control panel and let's add a keyframe and e is number four so this is a reference that i have created uh, for uh, for the number that i have assigned uh, for each of the mouth for that i have also kept an image file so that uh, i can refer to this image file when i'm animating the mouth so let's give it four then inspire inspire then yes inspire for s we can uh, use 10 pyre with then for pyre we can use a and like this you can uh, keep adding uh, the uh, the mouths for each of the pronunciations of the voiceover because uh, and you don't have to be very particular about each and every pronunciation you can miss some uh, miss some pronunciations or uh, sounds in between it's just that it should look natural to viewers so that is what that is all you have to keep in mind and this is how it looks in inspire with creativity in and the best part about uh, doing or rigging the mouth uh, using expression rather than not using time remapping is that you can further have control over individual layers. So, for example, here we have used the uh, the mouth number 2 and then mouth number 10. So, from the mouth, mouth number 2, uh, we can add a skill property keyframe. Then let's go to the mouth number 10 and let's 
add a scale property keyframe so we are actually going to add further add some motion in between to have a smoother to have a like a smoother transition between the mouths so for example for this one we can slightly scale it down in the y axis and for and after uh, after the mouth is uh, I mean after the mouth is visible we can further scale it up a bit in the y axis to give a little motion after after the mouth is visible same we can do for the other mouth inspire with creativity inspire with and like creativity this, i have added a little movement in the mouth which you couldn't have done uh, if you would have uh, uh, rigged the mouth using the time remapping method. Uh, but again, this one is not looking pretty accurate. But you got the point, right? I mean, you can further animate the mouth from the scale property, from the rotation property, or even you can convert the layers into shape layers and animate the shape path property. So like this, you can have more controls over individual mouth layers. Uh, uh, using this method. Okay, now let's move on to lesson 4 where we will rig the full body of the character using Tweak Angela. Okay, we are in Adobe Illustrator. So when you are planning to design a character and later on uh, rig it in After Effects, then one of the most important thing that you need to keep in mind is the joint should be the joints or the overlap between the joints should be as round as possible. For example, here the overlap between the arm and the forearm you can see uh, it's completely round overlap even between the uh, uh, between the forearm and the hand the overlap is complete round if i check out the leg joints here also you can see it's complete round overlap even the leg connecting with the body this overlap is also completely round overlap the leg with the foot again a round overlap now if it's uh, very easy to add round overlaps between the joints if uh, if your character is uh, designed with basic geometric shapes like uh, rectangles or rounded rectangles or shapes like that but this particular character is not designed uh, with complete geometric shapes you can see the shapes are a bit modified so a very easy trick to uh, get this round overlap for this kind of illustration is just make a sharp corner like this and for the forum you can see this is again a sharp corner and on the edges i have added two different circles so when i am adding all of this i'm getting a round overlap same i have done for the leg you can see these are the sharp corners but at the same time on the edges, I have uh, also added a circle. Like this, I have also got a round overlap. So this is a very easy trick that you can follow if uh, your illustration style is not completely geometric shape based, then this is a very easy way to uh, get that round overlap or near round overlap. Now, when the design was ready following this guideline, then I have separated all the layers for each and every joint in a separate layer such as uh, the hand, the forearm, the arm are in a separate layer, the body is in a separate layer, each of the joints of the leg is also in a separate layer, the foot is also in a separate layer and I have kept the entire head in a separate layer because in the last lesson I have already shown you guys how to rig the complete face of the character so in this lesson we are not going to rig it again so I'm just going to reuse that uh, face rig from the previous lesson for this one. So once the design was ready and the layers were properly separated and named, then I have added few shapes. So these are few reference shapes that I have added in the overlap points. And uh, we would need this in the rigging process. So if you are planning to design the character yourself and later on rig it in After Effects, then this is the industry standard illustration process that you need to follow. Okay, now let's jump into Adobe After Effects and let's get started with the rigging process. 
Okay, we are in After Effects and I have already imported the character illustration file and the face rig from the previous lesson. So let's import it in the timeline and let's properly place it on the position of the character's head by scaling it down and readjusting the position property. And you can lower the transparency to properly adjust the position. And now let's delete the head illustration layer and parent head with the neck layer. And for the neck, let's solo the layer and let's move the anchor point somewhere around here on this circle overlaps center. Now we're going to parent the neck with the body. Let's select the body layer and let's move the anchor point somewhere around here. Okay, now let's start with rigging the arm. So let's turn on the reference layers and let's start with the left arm. So let's select the shape on the shoulder overlap, press and hold the shift key and then select the shape on the arm and the forearm overlap and then the hand overlap. Go to Dwig Angular, click on links and constraints, click on humanoid, arm structure. Now Dwig has created arm structure layers and it has not just created, it has also repositioned it properly at the exact center of each of the ships of the reference ships. So that's why I have added the reference ships in this positions so that I don't need to reposition the structure layers. So let's select the structure layers and place it above the uh, hand illustration layers. And let's solo the layers with the structure layers. Let's parent the hand with the hand structure layer, forearm with the forearm structure layer and arm with the arm structure layer. Now select all these structure layers Go to links and constraints, then click on auto rig. And now if I just deselect all the layers and only select the controller layer and move it, our hand is properly rigged. And in case you want to change the bending direction, you can do it very easily from the effects and controls panel. Go to auto swing, activate or enable auto swing, then click on reverse. Right now, the bend direction has reversed, but we don't need it. We, we actually need it in this way. So now let's follow the exact same process and rig the second arm. And with this, the arm too is also rigged. And now it's time to rig the leg. So let's select the legs reference layer. So let's start with the left leg. So let's select this one, then this one, and then this one. And then again, go to bones, go to humanoid. And this time we're going to select leg structure. Again, the structure layers are created and properly positioned. And I'm just going to change the tip of the toe and place it exactly where the illustrations tip of the toe is. Now let's select the structure layers and place it on top of the leg layer and just parent it with its structure layers. So calf with the calf, thigh with the thigh, and the shoe with the foot. Then select the structure layers, go to links and constraints, click on auto rig, that will rig your character's leg. All right, so with this, the left leg is properly rigged. So with this, both the hands and legs are rigged. Now we don't need these reference layers anymore. So we can simply select all of this together and just delete it. Okay, now we're going to select the arm structure layers and the thigh structure layers and then click on controller and add controllers for each of these four layers. So for the arm, let's name it L arm for the left arm controller. Then for the right arm, let's name it R arm. Then for the left thigh, let's name it L thigh. And for the right thigh, let's name it R thigh. So right now, let's select all these four controllers and parent with the body layer. And now let's parent the arm and the thigh structure layers with its controllers. And let's add another controller for the body layer. So select the body layer, 
and then click on the controller and wake has added a controller exactly at the position of the anchor point now let's name it controller body or c body and let's parent the body layer with this controller so now if we move the body the entire body or the entire character is moving with it and further we can even move the joints of the arm and even the legs with the thigh controller so now what we are actually going to do is we are going to lock all the layers all the unnecessary layers and shy it out so that we are only left with the controllers but before that i would like to add few more controllers for example uh, the neck controller we can add a controller for the neck so let's select the neck controller and add a controller for the neck and uh, let's name this neck yeah and let's parent the neck with this neck controller and the neck controller with the body layer and let's add another controller for the head so let's select the head composition and let's click on the controller and let's parent this with the neck controller and let's parent the face rig with the head controller now one more thing inside this composition we have few more controllers to control the face and the eye blink but rather than going inside the composition to animate the face we can also add the controllers here itself so for that select the composition then you need to be in the controller section and then click on extract it's going to extract the controller outside the composition and now with the controller from outside the face composition you can control and animate the face and even the eyes okay so these are all the controller layers and below it we have all the illustration layers and the bone layers so let's select so let's first select the bone layers so for that go to controls and select bones it's going to select all the bone layers in the composition i'm going to just turn off the visibility then shite out and lock the layers now we're going to select the illustration layers as well as the composition i mean all the other compositions we don't need to uh, touch any of the other layers other than the controller right now so we can simply shite out and lock the layers and just activate shy and now these are all the controllers we would need to animate this character right now okay now it's time for a bonus tip so for this character rig the hands are in front of the body but in some cases you may need the hands behind the body in that case you have to shy it out and then find the hand illustration layers split it and uh, just move it behind the body and the and the process is going to be too hectic and there's a better solution to this so let's find the uh, hand illustration layers let's start with the left hand and let's change the color of the layers so that we can properly distinguish it so let's duplicate it one more time and place it behind the body layer okay now let's select the left hand control so let's select this one and let's apply a checkbox control and let's rename it front behind and let's lock this uh, in the effects control panel and let's select the front hand illustration layers and open the opacity property and press and hold the alt key and click on the stopwatch to open the expression panel and let's pick whip this with the checkbox and after this we're going to type in dot value multiplied by 100 and a semicolon so let's copy this expression and let's paste it on the other opacity properties so right now if i check this box the hands are going to be in front of the body and if i uncheck it the hands are going to be behind the body of course it's not going to look like this the hand layers are even going to be behind the leg layers so it should look somewhat like this and after moving the hand behind the body 
on one side you can easily change the direction of the character by rotating the face and then slightly shifting the other hand okay now let's move on to lesson 5 where we will rig different hand gestures okay we are in adobe illustrator and uh, these are the different hand gestures let's turn on the visibility of few hand gestures and let's uh, reposition the hand gestures of few uh, hands in a different location so for this hand gestures one thing that you may notice is common among all the hands are the palm area the palm area is actually uh, consistent throughout all the hand gestures because uh, when i'm rigging the uh, rigging the hand with the main character uh, i'm only going to uh, take reference of a single hand gestures but uh, when i'm uh, switching to a different hand gestures then i would want it to be properly uh, positioned uh, and there's no issue with uh, the rigging process so for that uh, it's very important to keep the palm area consistent throughout all the hand gestures okay now let's jump into adobe after effects and let's get started with the rigging process okay we are in after effects and here we have already imported the hand gestures inside the after effects composition so let's drag it and drop it into the timeline and place it on top of any of the hands so let's place it uh, on top of the right hand and let's just flip the direction go to transform and flip horizontally and now we are going to just uh, reduce the transparency a little bit and uh, rescale it and reposition it and uh, match the exact position of the original hand illustration okay now we are going to just parent this hand composition of the hand gesture composition with the original hand illustration and just turn off the visibility of this one and give the opacity 100 percent for the hand gestures composition now let's turn on the shy so that we can only see the layers that are useful so let's select the right hand controller and let's apply slider controller here and let's lock it here in the effects control panel and let's get inside the hand gesture layer and open the opacity property and here we are going to add an expression so we're going to first uh, add a variable layer num equal to one enter control which is another variable equal to then we're going to pick whip it with this slider and a semicolon enter and then we are going to add an if else statement so if inside the brackets there would be a condition control equal to equal to the layer num then open and close parenthesis and inside print value equal to 100 that means when control is equal to number one for this layer the opacity is going to be 100 percent else then open and close parenthesis value equal to zero so if the condition is not fulfilled the value is going to be zero so right now here it's zero that's why uh, nothing is visible if i give it one we can see these hand gestures and if i change it to a different number like four again it's not visible so like this i'm just going to copy this expression and paste it on the opacity property of other layers and we have to change the number for the second one we can give number two so when it's two this hand gesture is visible let's give two you can see the hand gesture changed and like this we are going to copy and paste the expression on the opacity property of the hand gestures and change the layer number okay so we have added expression to the opacity property of all the hand gesture layers now if i change the number on the slider from four to five five to six seven eight nine ten you can see with the numbers those 
uh, the hand gestures are also changing over here. Now the maximum number of hand gestures over here are 18. Now the problem is if I give something like 19, nothing is going to be visible. Or if I uh, go to zero or negative, like minus one, again, nothing is going to be visible. That means we have to lock the values of this slider controller in such a way that only the uh, values from one to 18 is being printed and also there shouldn't be any decimal values for example if i uh, give something like 4.5 again nothing is going to be visible but if i give it 4 or 5 it's going to be visible so for that let's get to the main composition okay let's add expression on the slider property under the slider controller so type in math dot floor inside the bracket clamp inside the clamp we're going to pick up this slider and then dot value comma then we are going to put in the range so here it's going to be from 1 comma 18 because we have total 18 hand gestures over here okay now if i import any other number other than uh, this range like 20 uh, it's going to take 18 if i give like minus 4 it's going to take 1 and if i uh, add some decimal values like 5.5 uh, it's going to take 5 it's not even going to take decimal values so now you can easily change the hand gesture of the character rig directly from this slider controller and finally let's move on to lesson 6 where we will learn how to rig the foot of your character in fake 3d okay right now we are in after effects and here we have the shoe illustration layers properly separate inside the composition and here we have few reference layers for uh, for each key poses of the shoe in different angle one for the side view one for the angled side view one for the front view and vice versa so we're going to first convert all the layers of the original shoe illustration into shape layers so for that select the illustration layers right click on it create and create shape from vector layer and now just delete the extra illustration layers and now i'm going to replace these two shape layers with the circle layer and use the original shoe body layer as an alpha mat so let's add two circle shape layers and match the color so i'm just cancelling the stroke and only keeping the fill color and then select these two shape layers and and use the shoe body layer as an alpha mat and turn on the visibility okay so right now we are going to animate the shape path property of the individual shape layers of the shoe illustration and we are going to uh, keep the five different key poses one for the extreme side view for for the left profile one for the right profile one for the angled left one for the angled right and another one for the front view so we will just need to add keyframes on the shape path property for these two five key poses of the show so starting with the very first layer so we have already started with the first key pose so we don't have to worry about it just open the shape path property by the way if you select the layer and press and hold the control key and then click on this toggle button it's going to open up all the properties un under the layer at the same time so we're just going to add keyframes on the shape path property of individual layers and once you have added keyframes on the shape path property on all the layers press u to open the properties with keyframe now you can either jump on to next four frame five frame doesn't matter you just need key poses here in the timeline so i'm just going to jump on to next five frame and add keyframes and turn on the visibility of the second key pose and let's uh, just bring down the opacity to around 50 and we're just going to match the shape path property so starting with the very first layer let's select this to vector points and drag it and just use the bezier handles to properly match the shape path of the key pose and then 
the shoe bottom layer. Uh, by the way, if you are wondering where I got these key poses, uh, I have uh, initially designed those key poses in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm just selecting individual shape layers of the shoe illustration and just matching each and every element with the key pose. Now this key pose is complete. Now we are going to jump on to next five frames again and add keyframes. Now once you have added the second key pose on the fifth frame, uh, you should maintain the number of frames in between the key pose. So I am just adding the third key pose after the fifth frame. So in that means on the tenth frame. So again, let's match the shape path property with the third key pose. That means this time the front view. And let's bring down the opacity to about 50%. And again, just following the same process. And if you are not fully comfortable with uh, using shape layers or how to change the shape path, how to morph shape path, then I have a detailed course on After Effects. I would highly recommend you to check it out if you want to completely master motion design and animation in After Effects. So I will be providing the link in the description. Go check it out. And if you are wondering how I am getting this transform box for the shape path, just select the shape path property and double click on it. And here you get the transform box. Again, this key pose is also ready. So let's move on to the next one and let's jump on to next five frames and let's proceed with following the similar process. Okay, now let's move on to the final key pose and again match the shape path with the key pose. And for this second circle shape, I'm just going to split this layer from the fourth key pose. Since in the fourth key pose it's not visible, I'm just going to move the shape path somewhere around here and from here we can bring in the uh, circle inside inside the area of the shoe so right now this is how it's going to look like let's turn off the visibility yeah it's looking pretty good so for these two back shape layers we have to uh, add keyframes on the opacity property. So let's just uh, fix the layers. I mean, let's start the layer from the very start and let's open the opacity property at keyframes. From here till the fourth key pose, we're going to give it 0%. From here, it's going to go from 100 to 0, but it's not going to be in uh, linear keyframes. It's going to be in hold keyframes. So once the playhead reaches the fourth key pose, it's going to be automatically zero. And now on the second back shape layer, it's going to be 100% opacity over here at 0% at the start. Again, 100% at the end. And just convert this keyframes into hold keyframes. Again, let's add a keyframe at the end for the shape path and the opacity as well just to maintain uh, the number of key poses for uh, all the layers. Okay, now we're going to connect all the properties with keyframes with a single controller so that we don't have to touch any single layer of the shoe illustration to animate the shoe and rotate it in different direction. Okay, now go to Dwake, then Links and Constraints, click on the Settings icon beside the connectors and click on the first slider option. This is a 1D slider. So with this, we can rig anything in one dimension. So I'm going to place it somewhere around here, select all these keyframes together, then go to the Tweak Angela plugin, click on next and click on properties. And now your shoe should rig properly. Now you only need 
this single controller to animate the shoe and rotate it in different direction. All right, so that's the end of this course. And the next step is going to be putting them into practice. So what's better way to practice than working on an actual project? So I have a detailed course on how to animate explainer videos. So in this course, I have shown you all the process from start to the finish of how I have animated this entire explainer video. And I will be providing the link of that course in the description. You can check it out from there. And if you have any suggestion regarding future courses or upcoming tutorials or anything else, you can do let me know in the comment section. And if you find this course helpful, then definitely hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.